Okay, so uh, he come to our next section. So we got uh, Howard from, from uh, Form 6 k who is the chief uh, fintech uh, evangelist. And then he will be talking about how to leverage the open banking phase three and four, uh, and also CDI to build up uh, actually smarter SME ecosystem. Okay, Howard, uh, how, how are you? Hello, Patrick. Thanks for inviting. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, nice to see you. Okay, uh, I can also see your screen uh, loud. Okay, so it should be fine. And then I will give the time to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Howard Wong from Forms Hong Kong. The title may be a lengthy, but the focus is straightforward. I'll focus on the commercial data interchange, open API, and also a smart and vibrant business ecosystem. So this is the agenda. I'll go straight in. There are two objectives for today. One, to share with you the new horizon that we see, and also to explore with you, to navigate with you together to this new horizon. First, about forms. We have over 2,000 talents that spread across these eight um, locations, and there are some projects that are beyond these locations. We are listed in the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, and we are also one of the 50 uh, blockchain um, index uh, constituents with some of the familiar names on the screen. Basically, uh, our core businesses is helping establish banks to change the bank, virtual banks to build the banks, and also central banks to shape the future of money. This is one of the multiple uh, central bank digital currency projects we do with Bank of Thailand, the Hong Kong MA, Central Bank of UAE, and the Digital Currency Institute of People's Bank of China to explore wholesale CBDC use cases cross-border. So that's uh, the introduction of forms, and we're now straight into the focus area. So we have all heard about uh, Banking Open API, and it's uh, globally uh, implemented in different jurisdictions at different paces. In Hong Kong, we have already um, gone through phase one and phase two, and I believe you have already um, tasted some of the interesting products or access some of the information that uh, are already deployed in phase one and two. In phase three and four, we're getting into the really interesting stuff about account information and transactions related information. The way we see it, the data value to consumers and also the industry is getting higher along with these uh, the progression of these phases. By that, we mean the data becomes more personal and it becomes more informative. So like previous sessions or um, yesterday, when we get to data, when these data become more meaningful, we can do more meaningful analysis. And that leads to the other point on the uh, Y axis on the left hand side, it will, or we will see more businesses and servicing opportunities. That means better tailored products or services and more variety as well. During the FinTech week last year, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority announced the commercial data interchange. It is going to help the corporates and small and medium-sized enterprises in terms of funding, but it's more than that. To us, we see this as an introduction of a river that enables more vibrant activities. History has taught us well with a new water source, plants will grow and new habitats form, meaning more activities and new business opportunities. It's an era that many can win in my view. Let's get into some examples. In this case, we got just in time SME landing is a growing small manufacturing business in need of funding. The need may come from a new order that the company received or a broken down key uh, equipment for manufacturing. In the past or even today, the business owner or the financial controller may need to file in an application manually and the bank has to have somebody to review what's been submitted. But with technology, API of course, and other devices to collect data, these can all be automated. A loan can be granted even before the 
owner knows about it. So the fund will be ready before the owner even approach a bank. What's the benefits to this? As mentioned just now, the banks and also the business owners can save time and use the time on better stuff like business development or maintaining relationships. So instead of doing paperwork and uh, arranging time for meetings, talk about the loans, the money needed, they can use it for better stuff. Also, besides funding, there are other scenarios or other use cases that can help these businesses and bank as well. The role of banks would be changing or they are taking up more roles. Instead of just being a source of funding, they can take up the role through partnerships with fintechs by offering other value added services such as payroll management, cash management, forex risk management, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get to that at the later slides. For this, we see a win-win between the banks and the businesses. The banks get healthier, more robust business partners, and these businesses get some uh, solid experienced uh, advisors. Next is a data-linked green bond. It is a corporate that runs a manufacturing plant, but now it needs to transform it to a carbon neutral due to ESG obligations. Obviously, we need a lot of other technologies to combine with the API platform. It could be IoT, cloud computing, distributed ledger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The key here is the measurement of the emission or the um, energy consumption of non-renewable sources can be measured real time, and all these data can be fed into an in analytical model to benchmark against some established environmental indexes. Compared to today where we have to wait for company reports, may it be monthly or quarterly or even yearly, this process provides much better transparency on how certain companies are performing or certain manufacturing plants are performing. The benefits is both to the society, to the corporate itself, as well as to banks and investors. The banks can be a facilitator bringing in institutional investors that are interested in these products where they are willing to accept a small discount to the bond coupon if the plant meets the established benchmark or KPIs. While if the plant doesn't meet the uh, required um, performance, a higher corporate coupon rate is automatically paid. So it's a fair game to everybody. Next, we look at a wider perspective. On the right hand side, we see four quadrants and we'll focus just on the prioritize. As you can see, there are many opportunities there. Some are long terms, some are more difficult to implement, some with less benefits, some more. In the prioritized sector, we see cases or use cases like business loans, as we mentioned in the early example, foreign exchange risk management, cash flow management, and line of credit management are the areas that banks can actually go in fairly quickly. They have the experience, they have the expertise, and implement these should bring in or at a lower cost than compared to the other um, use cases. And they can use these as a stepping stone and learn how to equip themselves with these capabilities and then start building on these blocks and move into the other quadrants in this map. And also, there are other considerations for banks if they want to take up these uh, transformation. From a strategic point of view, whether they would like to take on projects that are from the revenue perspective, cost reduction perspective, or from long-term value perspective, there are different options for them to consider. The key is their um, business strategy, their customer um, demographic. So it all depends on where they are today and where they want to get to. 
there are some hints here when we look at the readiness to execute. When banks or other financial institutions want to take up these new initiatives, they have to look at their own capabilities and business strategy. In terms of implementation, is it easy to integrate with their existing system or infrastructure? Are there any partners they need to bring on board in order to help them to make this happen? Are their data model ready? Are governance robust around it? And on development and deployment, do they have the capability? And again, whether they have any trusted partners to make it happen. Finally, and most importantly, on security. As we have talked about initially, the data we are having in phase three and four are getting more valuable, more sensitive, and obviously security is going to give a lot of confidence to the people or consumers that are going to authorize uh, various institutions to use the, their own data. And on the business readiness side, it's very important that on business capability or the business strategy, just thinking to revamp today's business model may not maximize your benefit. So you have to really think about maybe an entirely new business model. So whether it still fits the next three or five years, because what you implement today, it's going to last long. And then in terms of policy and budget, are there any alignment that you need to make in order to support your initiative? And also here, it's not just um, tax and money, it's more about uh, the culture as well. So when I say tax, it's like letters. It's, it's not the, the government kind of tax. So make sure your people or the change agents you have is going to make this happen. They see your vision and they are going to be on this ship with you cruising together. And then your data and analytics capability. Today in the industry, we all know that it's difficult to get data scientists. Uh, everybody is competing for these talents. So instead of making a data scientist team in your organization, is there any other way to partner with some of the trusted advisors or trusted um, solution providers in this domain? So you may keep a small amount of um, capable data specialists within your company and then work with some trusted partners that can bring you to your destination. And finally, any regulatory compliance obligations that your company has to manage. There are a lot of examples, although we have heard about these challenges, but there are many use cases already there in the market around the world. These examples are spread across six different domains. It could be risk management. It could be understanding the market, new product and services development, acquisition of customer, as well as due diligence of customers, new servicing to clients, and finally, the management of information and knowledge. We'll just briefly talk about two or three of them. Basically today, uh, similar to what Isaac has mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to gather data from or about SMEs. With open API platforms and the commercial data interchange uh, in Hong Kong, we see the possibility that gathering these data becomes easier. And this can provide a consolidated view about the industry and the market. So many different kinds of benchmarking or uh, giving the businesses or financial institutions in understanding where they are in terms of this market landscape. This will be very beneficial to everybody. And then on the surfacing side, um, similar to the roles, uh, the changing roles of financial institutions that I mentioned just now, there are many options out there that can help businesses to manage a lot of things. It may it be administrative efforts, payroll management, cash management, or even customer facing uh, initiatives like loyalty program, et cetera, et cetera. So all these 
can transform the entire um, society or the business community. The way we see the future ecosystem is like this. Obviously, we have the, all the stakeholders already here today, the financial institutions, the SMEs, the corporates, the fintech companies, and also technology aggregators and enablers. And all these are very important and they play different roles to make our society running and make our business thrive. With the introduction of CDI, it's like a new ecosystem or life form has surfaced. It's simply like blood veins in our own body facilitating the blood flow. All these data flowing across or within these uh, communities can enable a more vibrant business society, making things simpler, faster, smarter, and safer. So these uh, lead to the end of my sharing. And if you're interested, you can scan the QR code and get to see our point of views about the development of the industry. And now we are at the Ask Me Anything or Q&A session. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, Howard, for sharing and then talk about the, the CDI and then the SM ecosystem. So um, I think I, I will also ask some questions. Um, and we all love um, have, uh, hearing the problem, challenge, and how we tackle that. Because we, we do have, uh, understand that it's some directional thing. So uh, maybe from your point of view, mm -hmm. when we are going to the, uh, for example, CDI, you mentioned yeah. five different parties, uh, yeah. maybe the, 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 the uh, corporate, uh, the SME, and mm -hmm. Ebola, et cetera. Um, how can you see the major challenge? And then do you yeah. have uh, one of, or two uh, suggestion how they can yeah. better prepare that and then join the uh, SME ecosystem, except, especially in Hong Kong? Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Uh, glad you bring this up. Um, actually, I see there is a very um, big challenge for both um, maybe medium and smaller size banks and companies because they lack the resources or the expertise to get onto this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, a very real case, uh, say, if I am a solution provider, it's basically impossible for me to deal with 10,000 SMEs at the same time. So mm. if I have a solution, I would partner with somebody like an aggregator or enabler that I show in one of the bubbles. Mm. So they are going to help me to manage these connections, may it be on the API connection perspective or dealing with the um, CDI platform. So mm -hmm. I, I am one of the service provider, but obviously I need somebody to help me to get connected to all these businesses. So uh, it's similar when you flip it to the SME side as well. So if mm -hmm. I am an SME owner, I may not have the resources or may not have the IT staff that mm -hmm. can help me uh, to get on to these um, sophisticated stuff. So I may need to talk to somebody that can help me that are familiar with the uh, API technology to get on board to these uh, ecosystems. So uh, I think working together with uh, a lot of trusted partners will help in this, uh, in, in getting everybody on board and make the Hong Kong uh, transformation uh, easier. Mm -hmm. So you are, you are talking about uh, something like the domain knowledge or maybe uh, there's some gap that uh, different people need to fulfill together because um, they want to focus on their own domain. So we're talking mm -hmm. about the limited resources. Okay, so um, another quick question is talking about the, the data exchange. So uh, we do yeah. heard a lot of uh, ideas talking about the concern of uh, data exchange, uh, the, mm -hmm. this privacy data consideration, yeah. etc. And then we do heard about the federated learning. So yeah. um, how can you view about the, the CDI? Do you, do you think there's also some difficulties uh, maybe on the data privacy, et cetera, and how we can better prepare on that one? Yeah, um, so I think the worry is realistic, but there are solutions to it. Um, if you have heard about um, self-sovereign identity, uh, basically the, the, the world oh. or the web 3.0 is heading towards that direction. So even for CDI, um, according to our understanding, there will be um, certain authorization tool 
available for business owners or individuals to okay. use. So basically, before somebody can access your data, uh, mm. imagine you, you can use an app to authorize that before it happens. So mm. uh, whoever accessing your data has to first get your um, consent. And then later on, you can also remove that consent if you choose not to continue to receive that service. So that's the starting point uh, when the data first get accessed and also mm -hmm. an ongoing monitoring or authorization. And then throughout mm -hmm. the usage and connection, there are security protocols in place to make sure the participants are uh, managing uh, or at least getting to a minimum security standard uh, in order mm -hmm. to use the data. Hmm, okay, get that. You you mentioned the SSI, the sales. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. So uh, I think I got I got your point. So uh, mm -hmm. thanks for um Howard for sharing about the SME ecosystem and also how the open banking phase three and four and CDI can help. So thanks for your time and thanks for, uh, Thank you, for your support. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah.